Hi there and welcome to today's Quentin Carpenter Nature of Flowers How-To Photoshop Lesson. Um, if you like what you're watching on Nature of Flowers Photoshop Lessons, make sure you hit the subscribe button and you tick that thumbs up as well. Okay, so today we're going to be looking at an artist called Alison Dyers. Um, she's famous for doing these diamond style patterned pictures, combining two different portraits taken from slightly different angles to create a really cool juxtaposition. So. There's a couple of her examples here from Juxtapoles magazine. And you can see that what she does is she creates um, a doubled up image with different photographs. Okay, and there's another example there, right? So to do this, we're going to need Photoshop. So I'll go over to here. And we'll go to Photoshop. What we've got in Photoshop is two pictures that are taken in a similar setting, but slightly different angles. We are going to also need a diamond grid. I went onto the internet, searched up diamond pattern, and found this. Now, I'm going to do a crop on the image first, because I don't want to take up the whole image with the pattern. But we're going to make that slightly bigger, and that's going to be where our crop is. So to do a crop, we can use the crop tool, and we can basically draw our diagonal lines in and our lines up so that we just crop to where we've got our pattern and then we press enter and you will see that the image is now smaller we can press ctrl plus to make it a bit bigger on the screen so we can see what we're doing we can see that we now have our two images now we might want to move them around slightly i think that's about right we'll make it slightly see-through now by changing the opacity so I can see roughly how they're going to line up. I think, let's move that just slightly. Down to there. So the eyes are all kind of there, but not there. About there, that will work for me. Okay, I'm going to get my grid. I'm going to move my grid down a bit. I'm going to do another crop in a second. So. And make sure that works. Change the opacity of this. And experiment with. You don't necessarily need it quite so wide either, so I'll bring that crop in to approximately there. So I'll talk you through what we're doing. We're going to crop the image again. We've rescaled the pictures so they are lined up where we want them. And press enter. Now, if I go back to this layer, I'll make it not see through. I've got that picture there, that picture there, and my grid there, which I have got slightly see-through. Now, we need to do some selecting, and then we need to do some cutting and pasting. It is relatively straightforward. Once we've got these layers in the right place, so this is the bit that takes the time. Taking the photographs, obviously number one, putting them in the right place, number two, and then getting the grid, number three. So we make sure we've done that. Once we've done that, on the grid, we did show you this technique before, if we make that, so you can just see the black and white. If we go to select and we select a color, so we're going to do a color range selection. We want to look for just the black. So we just want to make sure we've only got the shadows. You see now I've just got the black bits here. I click OK and instantly I've got my flashing lines for all the black pieces. This is where it gets quite complicated but really simple at the same time first things i need to make sure i'm on the move tool up here i need to hide the eye of the layer that is flashing i then need to go to the layer with the first face on i need to go to edit copy edit paste and that creates a copy of just those pieces. I close the eye of the original layer and I have now got my image. Okay. It's as simple as that. We create this amazing diamondy effect. Now, what we would like to do, and I think it will look more effective, is if we have it in black and white. So we'll save the color one first. We'll go file, save as, and we'll call it BBI. Blend. 
can stick that in our artist responses later on. We can do a really quick black and white. We can go image mode and put it on grayscale, which will don't flatten, but it will make everything, all the color disappear for both layers. And we might want to do some adjustments to it. We need to select a layer. We need to do some image adjustments to the brightness and contrast. Give it some more contrast. Maybe make it one of them a bit darker. And you can see instantly, just by changing the contrast and changing the brightness, we have got a more effective response. Okay. Now, there are many ways we could explore this technique. But essentially, it is quite a simple technique. Remember to get the layer. Now, if I save this one as a black and white one, I'll show you one different way of doing it as well, different techniques. So we'll do blend. I'll put black and white on that one. Save that. Okay. If I close the eye to that, open the eye to this one. So we've got both pictures again to make the diamond. And this time, I'm going to click on the diamond layer. I'm going to make the diamond a, a lot bigger. So it's bigger diamonds. Move it so that it's in a nice place. Looking at where the eyes are, I'm going to aim it for the eyes. I'm thinking about there this time. So I've got both eyes. Okay. I'll show you a slightly different technique to do it. So we do our layer, we go select, we go from color range. Again, we've already got it set up, so we don't have to do that again. I'm going to get rid of the fuzziness of it there. Okay, I'll keep that about there. Click OK. Now, close the eye. What we could do, because we've got the area selected, and we want to keep this area, we could do it a slightly different way. We could literally go select, inverse, and then simply on the keyboard press backspace, and then press control B, and that would be a very similar technique. This time though, we've removed the picture so we wouldn't be able to go back from there. I'll just do those image adjustments again, brightness and contrast, give it more contrast, Darkness. And you can see instantly, we can see where the shadows are, and we have got a third response. When we're doing artist responses, it's always good to do a variety of different responses so that you can see and compare them later on. Okay, there we have it. If I open the other one and we compare them side by side, so if we look at the, this one. And then I go, a really good way of seeing two things is to arrange our workspace two horizontally. And we can see both images together. Okay, put that out there. So you can see which one of the two you prefer. And I'd be interested to see your comments below, which one you think, whether it's the top one or the bottom one. I'd be interested to see what you think. Personally, at the moment, I'm going with the second one I did, I think the eye works more effectively as bigger eyes and it has more detail to it. That's my personal opinion. I'd like to love to hear your opinions. Okay, so just to recap one more time, in case we need to do this many times, we need to make sure we have got two layers. We've got the grid. I'm going to just close this one again. So we've got the grid. We can change the opacity of the grid so that we get it where we want it. Once we're happy where it is, we can go to select and do the color range. Make sure that's all set up right, click OK. And then we do the layer we want, edit, copy, edit. And that creates the effect and then we do the color balances, okay? Hopefully that's all very clear and straightforward. Thank you very much for watching this Quentin Carpenter Nature of Flowers video. And um, make sure you hit that subscribe button and obviously hit the bell as well, and then it will notify you when there are the next videos available.
Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have enjoyed doing some Photoshop work with me today. Okay, goodbye.